I seem to get continual, what you say, trolling hate letters from people who basically are lost in perception. Perception that they see big shiny equipment and have the direct assumption that it's paid for, yet really have no clue what we pay for payments or our annual budget. If I did put all that information out there, they'd probably still complain about it or try to micromanage your operation when the truth is they have no clue what they're talking about. One of the things we do is we lease equipment. We also own equipment, such as older equipment like this disc that I spent uh, $1,800 uh, to buy the disc. It came out of Platte Valley John Deere. It was basically stuffed in the weeds. It's all fixed up, 100% back to original condition, and it works great. Things like this you don't see in the videos. Things like this take hard work and sweat, which most people are not willing to do. And it takes commitment. It takes a love for what we're doing, and we got a nice disc because of it. A lot of people would just be jealous that we even have this disc. So let me explain a little bit about tractor leases, why we do them, as to why they're a good idea or not a good idea. In my last video, I made reference to the farm crisis that's going on and the Trump bailouts. One of the things that really drives me nuts about this current situation that we're in with agriculture is just the ability to know where your budget's going to be. And when the government dangles this proverbial carrot in front of your nose of $14.5 that mysteriously you've never seen a single cent for, yet they keep telling you it's going to be coming, it makes it awful harder to say I need to go buy something to balance out in tax deductions, or I may not have enough income to get through the year. You just don't even know where you're at. It's kind of like your boss telling you at work, hey, you may get a paycheck, and it may be $500, or we may not even pay you. You try to figure out your budget. Nobody would. Nobody would be able to do that. And my channel also catches a lot of people that are unhappy because I made reference to getting a farm bailout, yet for some reason... They think, oh, you got all new equipment, it's all magically paid for somehow. Believe me, our equipment is not magically all paid for. Our Actually, our top bigger tractors are lease tractors. We lease our tractors because we pay about $30,000 a year for those leases. Now, everybody says, whoa, 30000 how could you have that around? Well, here's how you have it around. Let's go over here to a simple calculator on the old Tractor House website. Do an annual payment. Six payments of about 6.45% interest, which would be about what any agricultural company is going to loan right now. A $225,000 tractor. That right there was an 8270R used with approximately uh, 1,200 hours. So you're going to, here's your finance charges, and you're going to pay uh, per year of $46,000 for that tractor. That's more than we pay for leases. Now I've changed this over to $125,000, which would signal something more like a used 8530. A used 8530 would compete with like the 8400R that we have that we lease. So $125,000, which is an average price for an 8530, which that tractor, if you buy it off a lot, it's probably going to have around 4,000 hours. So you're still going to pay $25,780 a year. Now, admittingly, in six years, you will own it. Now, if it's got 4,000 hours, you're putting 1,000 hours a year on it or maybe 700 hours a year, the time that tractor gets paid for, it's going to be at 10,000 hours. Well, most tractors around the 10,000 hour mark seem to need engine overhauls, transmission overhauls, um, various other things, axle bearings, draw bars wear thin, things happen, front end bushings, all sorts of stuff. So, while you may have a little bit of equity, I will guarantee you that a in 10 years, an 8530 will be worth approximately 45 thousand dollars you know with that kind of hours on it so you built about forty thousand dollars of equity by owning it now with the lease you got full warranty and everything's covered by the air if it blows up with the private tractor at four thousand hours you buy it there's a good chance you're gonna need to throw a ten thousand dollar set of tires on it you may need to fix other hydraulic oil leaks air conditioning issues uh put interior kits or whatever into them I could have a million neighbors tell you the same thing as what I'm telling you right now. Uh, so while there's a lot of perception out there, especially on my channel, that, ooh, you got shiny equipment, but you want us welfare. I don't want welfare. I just want income opportunity. 
and we do have new equipment. Yes, it's shiny. New equipment is shiny. Would I prefer to own it? Hell yes, I prefer to own that brand new tractor. But with the income that's in farming, that's not an option. I also don't feel it's a very good option to do something like these purchase plans. I actually had a neighbor. Uh, was in the exact same boat as us with the lease versus a purchase. And he was uh, quite confused on what to do. Uh, I think a million other farmers could tell you the exact same thing. If you're actively involved in agriculture and you're of any size, the numbers don't lie. You're going to see it for yourself. We even had a neighbor with a similar problem. He was leasing a 7R series tractor. The lease was set to expire. He came to us as we were selling one of our tractors. One was interested in buying it. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get together on a deal at that time. But he was stuck between a rock and a hard place. Any farmer that's between 1,200 acres and 2,200 acres is probably facing the same thing where they don't know whether to go lease something or to buy something. They need a certain size tractor, they need a certain size horsepower, but just like my figures showed, lease or purchase, what's a better option? There's tax write-offs to both, uh, but there's no clear winner. Uh, he ended up buying a Case IH Magnum and he's primarily buys green equipment. Um, I noticed that his family has bought several Case IH items when they've always bought John Deere in the past. And I think that was primarily based on budget. But, again, to re the point, people that don't have large enough incomes or didn't have productive grounds to just have the cash to go buy something are faced with a financing option and it comes down to what's the best course of action to go there. So while you see shiny green equipment out in the field or shiny red equipment out in the field, sometimes it's not theirs, it's basically a rental agreement and financially what they take home is not always that much income. And as a bit of a disclaimer here, as I just referenced, the 12 to 2200 acre guys, if corn is seven dollars, of course they can buy their tractors and not be leasing them. It sets an entirely different budget. If you had a town job that paid $35 an hour instead of 1250, don't you think you could buy a Lexus versus a uh, 92 Chevy Lumina? Simple math. You can build equity with a lease. For example, a tractor like this, this 8400R, may have a new selling price if you walked into the dealership and buy it cash, $360,000. Uh, if you lease it, say the price is three hundred and sixty, they are going to give you at the end of your five years, your lease buyout would be probably two fifty dollars area. Uh, you can lease it again after your end of your five-year lease, or you can just turn it back in, depending on what you want to do with it. Now, if you lease this tractor, it's 360 new, and your lease buyout at the end of five years is 250000 but say you've kept it in really good shape, you didn't rack a lot of hours up on it, and you go out in the used market, and you look for a five-year-old tractor in the $250,000 range on other 8400Rs. Now, say if 8400Rs at that point, because of inflation, have all went up to like $300,000 because the new prices have all went way up as well, then you've created equity in your lease. So, wow, I can't buy this tractor on the market anywhere for under 300 and I only owe John Deere 250 to buy it out. You, you created equity. Now, if you beat the tractor up and your lease is 250,000 buyout, but you go on the internet and there's a whole ream of these things selling for like 225, then you've lost money uh, with the lease. It's a roll of the dice based off of inflation. It's based off of current interest rates. It's based off of how the equipment was kept. It's based off what models are out there. A lot of variables can go into whether you obtain equity or not in a lease tractor. Or you can do what I would do, lease it for five, lease it a second term for five, because that's as long as John Deere will lease, would be 10 years, or so many hours, but we'll have it for 10. And then you can buy it with a six-year financing thereafter. That gives you basically 15-year financing. Yeah, it drags out the agony. Yes, 
the tractor will be wore out at the end of the 15 years. There'll be a little equity in it, but that is the plan. The other option is to buy older equipment, such as these tractors right here. We have a 4850, a 4630, and a 3020. Yes, these tractors are paid for cash. We own them. I actually own all these tractors. Uh, they are paid 100%. The thing that you don't see is off a of camera is I'm often working on things and working on things continuously to keep these tractors running. Uh, this 4630, I put a little blip up there about the air conditioning issue the other day on a video. thing I didn't say was we have to open up the whole cab top, blow out the vents, a uh, couple wiring issues on the air conditioner up there, and various other problems in the cab's HVAC system. Again, they're not filmed, and those are downtime out of the field. Those are knuckle breaking, uh, 95 degree days out where you're up there sweating in the shop, you know, busting your rear trying to get this thing back to working order. This tractor will have more problems. It's got a leaky hydraulic pump right now. And I got a couple other issues going on at the rear end that needs to be addressed. 3020, I need to do some work to the engine. I got an oil cooler leaking. We just got a front axle, the uh, steering motor seal put in. There's just always things that show up on older iron that need to be addressed. Now this little 4630, I've got it looking pretty good. However, is it cheap? Really, probably not. I've spent money on interiors. I've updated steps just so it'll fit around the loader. We had engine overhauls. Plus, you had to buy the tractor cash. If you give 15 for it, then you give several thousand dollars of parts, a thousand in the interior, pretty soon a five thousand dollar engine overhaul, and maybe you got to put eight thousand in the rear end. You got more money sitting in a 1977 tractor than you would have if you had just saved up a little bit more. Went out and bought like a 6195 uh, M or something newer. So sometimes older is not always cheaper. There are other factors to consider as well, such as this monitor right here. This 8400 R has this monitor built right in. This would be called a 4640 display if it was to be used in such as like that 4850. That display is going to be at least five thousand dollars with the unlocks on it. Probably more time you get Swath Pro and a few other things that you have to unlock for your planter row clutches. And then you got to buy a Green Star Universal wiring harness kit for the tractor. That right there is going to be fifteen hundred dollars. Then you got to buy a globe. So pretty soon you got seven thousand dollars in a minimum in a technology. This planter is a seventeen ninety five Exact Emerge. As you can see right here in the front, there's quite a few hydraulic hoses. Try to hook this planter up to a John Deere 4850. Could it be done? Yes, it could be done. Could it be done cheap? No, it absolutely cannot. You have power, you got cam buses, you have a tractor generator that John Deere only makes the mounts and brackets for, for 8,000 series. Maybe like an 8530, they'll go back and date as far as, but they don't make them for a 4850. You have to fabricate your own brackets. You get four hydraulics. Uh, 4850's never had four hydraulics. This requires more hydraulic flow than 4850 will produce. The only option is to buy a hydraulic power pack which sits up here on the hitch. Hydraulic power pack's $5,500. So right there, between your green store of $7,000 and your hydraulic power pack of $5,000, you got a minimum of ten dollars to $15,000 invested just to make a 4850 pull this planter. So if you buy a 4850 for $40,000, woo, I saved over buying that uh, 8000 R series or 8030 series. Did you really? Because you had to go immediately put another 15,000 in it. So now you got 55, 60,000 in a tractor with wore out tires and 8,000 hours on it just to operate this planter. Uh, and then you have to have front end ballast and things that the tractor didn't come with factory just to counteract the weight of it. So, yes, yeah, so you could plant with that thing and it would work fine with enough setup. Now you go out and you buy that stuff, you know, without anything. I just want to start farming. I rented some land. I got to go buy this tractor and planter. You have to have a pretty healthy budget and more of a budget than we have right now in our current current means market to obviously make that work. Not to mention, I don't know many farmers that are 2,000 acres and up that would ever be farming primarily with this line of equipment. Uh, I don't think there's one single farm in our area that farms over 1,500 acres that would only have a 1985 as their newest tractor. 
Well, Wild Kaiosh is king, and it is nice to have things paid for. That's not always an option for everybody. It's a case-by-case -case basis. Every farm is going to have a different set of books. For our operation in particular, we couldn't get over the acres or do the things that we want to do unless we did take some of those lease long-term finance opportunities. There are other opportunities on the farm as well, such as what I'm doing right now, which was taking wheat straw off. We've not only got a crop of corn off this field, we put wheat in, we get a crop of wheat, wheat straw, and soybeans. So we're using the field multiple times to increase our income. Yes, it's much more work, but we're utilizing what we have to make additional income for ourselves. Again, a case-by-case -case basis. I think there's certain people out there who just want to be entertained. They want to watch YouTube maybe to alleviate some stress or just be simply entertained. There's a lot of channels out there. I watch uh, Big Tractor Power. Uh, he does a great job of filming just tractors and talking about them and their information. Uh, and that's an entertainment-based channel because you don't know the guy's political uh, or religious beliefs. He strictly stays in certain content. And I think my channel, uh, when I stir up a certain bit of controversy, or say hardcore facts that maybe some people just don't want to face, it's uh, not always an entertainment factor as there is a um, defense mechanism gets triggered. I don't think a lot of people like hearing the truth either. They like to, to have a way of relief and they don't want to hear the facts of the real world. And uh, for those people, including some uh, neighbors that are jealous as holy hell, I think a lot of them are just too damned ignorant to, to realize that UCC filings are public information. You can check just about anybody's loans on just about anything. Uh, public record, not hard to do with a simple Google search. Again, most farmers have a case by case financial situation. Every single farm is going to be different from the land that they farm to their geographic location and what crops they farm. On our own farm, I do the things that allow my budget to grow. I do the things that allow my business to flourish. I try to remain as fiscally conservative as possible, but allow as much growth as possible at the same time. Two things that are not easy to balance. And I use YouTube as a platform to share a small amount of my story. Again, you don't see everything I do, but you do get a blip, or I bring things to life that are, let's just say, sometimes controversial, and not everybody wants to hear. For that fact, I have a video I've been wanting to do for some time, and I think I'm gonna be going ahead and publishing it here in the next week or so. I wanted to make sure I got my facts and figures in order, but it's going to be about our Iowa government legislators and why I think it's very important to bring certain things to light. If nobody stands up for the problems that are out there, then nothing gets done about them. You know, I've often said you have to have a platform and you got to be part of a solution, not part of the problem. You can be very angry about how your tax dollar is being spent, but if you don't say anything, there's no chance it'll ever get changed. So stay tuned for that and more. And obviously I'm not the only one that thinks this way because the subscriber count has went through the roof. And thank you to everybody that has hit the subscribe button. I'll see you on that next video.